Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to be talking about solving quadratic equations. So a quadratic equation is an equation that can be written in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. In this part we've already seen from whenever we were doing split b, the a, b, and c are still the same things. That is called standard form where a is not zero. So we don't want a to be zero because we want to make sure that we do have an x squared in it. The x squared in it is what makes it a quadratic equation. All right, so to solve these, we're going to be using factoring. And in order to be able to factor these and solve them, we're going to talk about the zero factor theorem. So the zero factor theorem says if a times b equals zero, then either a equals zero or b equals zero. So essentially what that's saying is that if you're multiplying two numbers and you want them to be equal to zero, well then one of those two numbers has to be zero. Because you can't multiply any other numbers to get zero other than one of them being zero. All right, so in order to use that property, the first thing we're going to need to do is isolate zero on one side, as in just set the equation equal to zero. So move things around and simplify until you get it equal to zero on one side. The second thing we need to do is factor it. So we can factor it using the same methods that we've already learned. Third step, we're going to set each factor equal to zero. So that's where we use that zero factor theorem. And then lastly, we just solve the two smaller equations that we're going to get. And usually there are two answers. Sometimes there is just one answer that repeats, but in general there's going to be two. So let's go ahead and start looking at some examples. Alright, so example one. In this case, it's already set equal to zero, so we're ready to just go ahead and start factoring it. So since it has three terms, we can factor this one using split B. So we have AC and B. A times C is going to be 30, and B is going to be 11. Now, for the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and kind of skip over some of the steps in split B. I'm going to go ahead and jump to the factors. The factors that we're going to end up looking for, in this case, since we want it to be 30, it's going to be 5 and 6, because when we add those up, we're going to get 11. All right, so we go ahead and do split B. So we're going to get x squared plus 5x plus 6x plus 30 equals 0. We do our grouping. And so first group has a GCF of x, which gives us x times x plus 5. The second group has a GCF of 6, which is going to give us plus 6 times x plus 5. And that's still equal to zero. The insides match, so we're going to have x plus 5 times x plus 6 equal to zero. And now we have it factored. Now to solve these equations, we just set them both equal to zero. So we get x plus 5 equals zero, and x plus 6 equal to zero. For the first one, we could just subtract 5 from both sides, and we're going to get x is equal to negative 5. That's our first solution. For the second one, subtract 6 from both sides, and we get x is equal to negative 6. That's our second solution. So negative 5 and negative 6 are two solutions to this first example. Alright, let's look at the second one. So for the second one, it's going to be the same thing, we're just going to factor it a little bit differently. So in this case, since there's two terms, we can use difference of squares. 
So the square root of y squared would just be y. Square root of 36 would just be 6. So we go ahead and make our two parentheses. y in the first spot, 6 in the second spot, plus and 1, minus in the other. All right, now that it's factored, again, we just set both of these equal to 0. So we have y plus 6 equals 0, and y minus 6 equals 0. For the first one, we just subtract 6 from both sides, get y equals negative 6. And for the second one, we can add 6 to both sides and get y equals positive 6. And those are our two solutions. All right, third one. So for the third one, again, we're going to end up doing this using the difference of squares. But if you notice, we actually have a GCF in this case of 3. So the first thing we can do is just divide these by 3. So we're going to get 3 times x squared minus 25 equals 0. And now we can go ahead and do the difference of squares. So square root of x squared would just be x. The square root of 25 would just be 5. So we're going to get 3 times x plus 5, x minus 5 equals 0. And then we can set everything that's multiplied equal to 0. Now if you notice, for this first one we get 3 equals 0. That doesn't really make sense. So we can actually just ignore that one. That one doesn't make sense, so we just throw it out. And in general, unless it has an x with it, the number out front is always just going to be thrown out. Then we have x plus 5 equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0. So we can subtract 5 from both sides in the first one, get x equals negative 5, and in the second one we can add 5 to both sides and get x equals positive 5. Those are our two answers. All right, example four. So again, first thing we're going to want to do is take out a GCF. In this case, our GCF is 9x. So we can divide both of these by 9x. The GCF comes out front. So we're going to have x minus... 3. Now notice there's no more x squareds in the problem, so this is actually already factored as much as it can be. So we can just go ahead and start setting them equal to 0. So 9x equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. For the first one we just divide both sides by 9. And remember 0 divided by anything is just 0. For the second one, we can add 3 to both sides, and we get x equals positive 3. And those are our two answers. Alright, example 5. This is the first one where it's not set equal to 0 already. So before we do anything else, we want to set this equal to 0. So subtract. 24 from both sides, that'll let us set it equal to 0. Alright, so we're going to get 2x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals 0. Now we can go ahead and factor it. So starting with a GCF, the GCF in this case is 2. So we can divide everything by 2, and we're going to get 2 
times x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. All right, now we can factor this part using split B. So we go ahead and make our chart. A times C is negative 12. B is negative 1. And so the factors that we're going to be looking for are 3 and negative 4. That's what's going to add up and get that negative 1. So if we go ahead and split B, we're going to get x squared plus 3x minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. We can group it. So for the first group, we have a GCF of x. So it gives us x times x plus 3. Second group, we have a GCF of negative 4. So we have minus 4 times x plus 3. And so x plus 3 times x minus 4 equals 0. Now we do have that 2 out front, but remember, since it doesn't have an x with it, we're just going to ignore it anyway, so we don't have to worry about that 2 from now on. All right, when we set both of these equal to 0, we're going to have x plus 3 equals 0, which if we subtract 3 from both sides, it's going to get us x equals negative 3. That's one solution. Then we have x minus 4 equals 0. And if we add 4 to both sides, we're going to get x equals positive 4. That's our second solution. All right, so that's the first five examples. The first, or sorry, the last four of this section is going to be in a second part to this video. So right about now, you should see something pop up that'll let you go to the second part. All right, and with that, I'll see you in the next video.